Today we're going to look at the MSI Twin Frozer R9280X. This is not an R9280X. This is a melon. So why would you buy an R9280X, especially the Twin Frozer MSI edition, over a nice yellow melon. Well, first of all, you can put the Twin Frozer in your computer, which is a bonus which allows you to play games. Melon, you can't. But all seriousness, this uh, R9280X, not 290X, this naming scheme is completely bonkers to me, is a really, really awesome card. It plays games extremely well. I love the cooler. It's extremely silent. And I would highly recommend it if you're going for the middle price or higher middle price in gaming cards. It's not a top end card, but it plays everything I've thrown at it pretty damn well on max settings. You may need to drop down some of the filters a little bit, but it's gonna be fine. This particular one has three gigabytes of GDDR5 RAM, memory, RAM, memory stuff, running at seven gigahertz, I believe. Yes, running at seven gigahertz. It also features 2,000-ish uh, stream processors, and if my laptop is not stupid... ...is honestly a fantastic card for the price. If we take a look at the outside of the card box, you see that it says the R9280X Gaming Edition, the overclocked, and it comes with X splits for about six months, I believe. Look on the back, it just tells you everything that this card's meant to be amazing, and also polar bears and whatnot, and how it's so much better than reference. Just going to open it up, see what I get on the inside. You get a nice companion box thing that has all your accessories and stuff and you get the, the card in a nice anti-static bag. You have the driver disc that you can throw away immediately and just download them from the website. Crossfire bridge, a couple of Molex connectors and whatnot and yeah. This is the outside of the card. You see it's a nice big shroud with two huge fans and a mass amount of heatsink. You've got one D dual link DVI, one HDMI, and two mini display ports, which and a giant uh, MSI cutout thing. Looking on the top, you've got the two crossfire fingers, a ginormous heat pipe, a strong strengthening member, as well as one eight-pin connector and one six-pin connector for your PCIe power. And this is just a nice overview of what you get: the big fans and huge amount of heatsink you have underneath this. This really does cool well. When looking at this R9280X, you see it's a very nice card. It's a really big card, in fact. It's just short of a GTX 480 and just longer than my 7870, which means it's a fairly big card. I mean, it's not going to be an R9295. Why are they there? What is their name? The, the dual R9290X things on one PC. It's not as long as that or as long as, say, a 690. But for a single GPU, it's huge. It's taller than the PCI bracket. It's long, longer than my M80X motherboard that I test on. And it's huge. But you do get a huge amount of surface area. As you see here as I pan around, there's a huge amount of surface area. And you've got these two massive fans, which look as if they could spin to massive amounts. And I don't know. They've never got anywhere above about 30% fan speed. And this thing that stays toast is cool. If we look at some gaming benchmarks, the melon really doesn't stack up too well here. It is alright, but it overclocks pretty damn well. I'm going to have to move things on my laptop again. So like I said, this is the Twin Frozer Edition one, and I played it on five games. We have Bioshock Infinite, Crisis 2, Far Cry 3, Metro Last Light, and Civilization 5. Bit of a random game at the end. I play it lots, so it mattered to me. <laughs> I did both a stock clock comparison and what I could overclock my card to because the overclocking feature will depend on which cards you have. My particular card overclocked to, I had to do a plus 13 on the core voltage and I got it to 1150 and 1500 which is 1150 on the core and 1500 on the memory which is all right actually it, g it gave it a bit of a boost not massive and it didn't actually make it any louder so it's free performance why wouldn't you do it back to the games 
We're looking at Bioshock Infinite first. On stock clock, it got a minimum FPS of 30, a maximum of 240, and an average of 100.63. This is on the Bioshock uh, benchmarking utility. And if I overclock it, again, I get a minimum of 30, but the maximum goes up to 252, and an average of 110. That's a gain of about 10 FPS on your average, which is perfect, it could make all that difference when you're in the critical moments and try to kill the boss and he doesn't die. Crisis 2 is another one. We had a minimum of 49, a maximum of 129, and an average of 74. With the overclocked one of minimum of 47, maximum of 111, and average of 74. I think something went slightly weird or there's a different bottleneck in my system. Yeah. Uh, um, the... Yeah. Far Cry 3 was another little weird one. He did get a performance in this. He had a minimum of 21, maximum of 64, average of 41, and when you overclocked it, you got a minimum of 23, maximum of 68, and an average of 43. It's a 2 FPS game, but again, like I said, it could make the difference when you're in the deep bits with lots of bosses trying to kill you, and it's just a massive pain in the ass. Moving on to Metro Last Light, this absolutely destroys graphics cards, I don't quite know what's going on here. But still, I got a minimum of 29, a maximum of 124, an average of 85. Now when I overclocked it, something weird happened, it actually got worse. I don't know what's going on, there was no thermal throttling, again I think it's my benchmarking process. But at least that gives you an idea of how well it's performing in that game. And finally on to Civ 5 we have another weird thing but I will give you what it was it was a maximum of 239 and an average of 183 obviously with V-Sync turned off this handled Civ 5 no problems again it's getting a bit old though so I like that game and I ran out of things to benchmark because Skyrim was not running very well what are you high? it's a melon Oh, you mean the graphics card? Yeah, yeah, it ran Minecraft. Minecraft's fine. Minecraft runs on anything. I think, well, they got it running on tablets now. Just put that in there for all you people. Give them, they run Minecraft. Yes, it runs Minecraft. And Minesweeper. Deal with it. So there you go. That was a review of, well, my benchmark and overview of the R9280X from MSI. I think this is a really great card. It's silent. It performs really well. And if you're not a complete overclocking noob or you think a graphics card is a melon, you could get some great performance out of it, and your benchmarks weren't so stupid. Yeah. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this review. Remember to eat melon. Like, share, favourite, subscribe if you think of anything. If I've done something wrong and you want me to improve on something on future great benchmark videos or other videos in general, let me know in the comments down below. And as always, bye! I don't know why I said that. I've never. I've done two videos.